We, we have um, a very interesting project um, uh, application that is CLIP. So um, that stands for Kabel and Leiding in, in Internet Portal, where um, all underground conduits um, and cables are being shared to all uh, people who need to um, dig. So it's been um, transcribed into law that everyone who um, asks for a permit to dig uh, needs to consult these plans in order to avoid uh, big accidents like we had in uh, 2005, I think, where uh, a big gas conduit was hit and uh, we had a big explosions with some um, fatalities. And in order to avoid that, we um, um, worked quite hard to make all the underground uh, conduits and cable plants interoperable, to join them together and to make them digital digitally uh, consultable. This was a Flemish initiative. It's been copied to uh, the Walloon part and the Brussels part. So they're using um, as a same approach, not the same project, but the same approach. So um... having standards as well as compliance testing tools is, you know, it's a, I'll say, a, a, a key recipe for success. And within the OGC, we've built the OGC validator using a tool called Team Engine. Um, that validator has also been leveraged by, um, by the Inspire community, the European uh, Commission's Inspire community. Um, they have a tool called ET, uh, the ETF, which is able to link um, to the OGC validator and make use of uh, specific elements. I could mention uh, one example from Slovenia, which uh, we just recently uh, finalized uh, one of the European uh, co-founded project called eSpatial, where we will uh, optimize the use of uh, location data in a uh, digital public service uh, in the area of uh, urban planning or spatial planning and uh, issuing uh, building permits. Uh, this uh, project this activity is part of the biggest project, which is just now uh, on, almost uh, finished. So uh, this will be the location interoperability at uh, national uh, level, where data about real estate uh, and data about uh, uh, municipality spatial plans will be uh, merged together in one uh, supporting uh, process. And uh, here we achieve uh, so-called interaction between data sets without human interventions. One of the success stories that I would like to raise is the work we've done with uh, the city of Guimarães. So it's a municipality in the, re in the north region of Portugal and they are one of the good practices uh, from, from this initiative uh, because we, we help them create a digital platform uh, that gathers data from multiple domains. So they can see on the map uh, domain the data about uh, the tra real-time traffic conditions uh, the incidents reported by the community, uh, the parking availability, the weather conditions. And uh, as they are doing this, they are going through an iterative approach. So they didn't have all this data available at, 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 for, at, at start. So they started with a few uh, samples of data and then now the, the city is adding more. So it, it's on, on their own agenda and progress in the digitalization. And the interoperability that we offer with our solution helps them assess that. So they are, don't rely only on uh, Ubiware to integrate data, they can uh, add new players as they build their own procurement uh, process. I think the, the very nice example how things can really work and might work also in other domains and uh, other areas is example of uh, regional spatial data infrastructure. We, we are able to see these days here in Slovakia, it's uh, it's one of the uh, five or six regions we have in Slovakia. It's called the Preshov region. So it's area, something like Lombardy or really a region uh, composing a set of cities and villages. And they managed to set up uh, not only the regional spatial data infrastructure, but what is really, I think, a very important added value of that effort or, or initiative is the fact that they are not only trying to publish the data, but they are really providing a clear 
and I think convincing examples how to actually uh, use the location data in combination with any other data. In Norway, we we have our DCAT implementation, mm -hmm. and um, we are harvesting data in this DCAT uh, application from our geo portal, which means that all spatial data is available in um, in the geo portal. It's, it's a kind of success story, but for the users who use this DCAT. Uh, uh, catalog and uh, want to to uh, to download uh, spatial information you will be redirected back to the geo portal again so i i'm not really sure we we have the final solution on this but it's identified as important and and it's moving in a good direction absolutely yeah, when when i look at the way we try to well, let's say develop our national in the netherlands national geospatial infrastructure the concept of uh, identifying key registers so that you have a register where you have all your addresses and that these addresses are correct and that you that you don't have a confusion about an address or a key register such as a building register so that you have every building as a unique identifier that has a, has a has some characteristics which are all available and these are two examples when you do have this key addresses and key buildings registers you can combine and you can exchange a lot of information and you can bring together so many let's say variables which are related to the built environment 